What's up, everybody? Peter McKinnon here on Ryan's channel. We're in my office. I'm doing the intro for his video, which is probably a little different for you. You might not have expected this set. You might have been expecting some malls, maybe a couple pricking irons, maybe a little bit of a Tanner's Bond. But today, <laughs> we're getting none. Actually, we might actually be doing some of that. We totally are. Uh, thanks for you know, agreeing to do this. Oh, I, of course. You know, we were hanging out last week, and I'm like, yeah. this is so much fun just being able to talk leather with somebody that I they're not in my leather circles. So you wouldn't expect me to talk leather to the to the state that I do. I laugh inside <laughs> every time you mention a tool or some sort of a product like tokenol. Who yeah? Who the heck knows about tokenol? This guy. Yeah. This guy knows everything. I'm like, oh about look, tokenol. he's he's look, he's, he's he's got a bone folder in his hand right now as he goes through those pockets. <laughs> You're like, wow. See, even now that? that just made me laugh. Thanks for that intro. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean it was I'm, short and sweet, but I, yeah. I loved it. It's bang on. It's like seeing it in real life is just it's the best. It's another level. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, guys. Uh, today is a special treat because I get to talk shop with Peter McKinnon. Um, when I first met Peter, uh, he kind of told me his story that he was a leather crafter. And right yeah. away, I was very intrigued. I, I knew like, Peter what? at the, the video level was yeah. like, and then just went that much more. When you he had, you had no idea. I had no idea. That's what's so funny yeah. about it. Cause like, I know there's some people who have been watching and they're like, yeah, we've heard the stories or yeah, I think I used to buy, they used to follow me from the magic days to the leather stuff to YouTube, but you just didn't know at all. You were like, I knew what? Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> the veil was opened yeah. and I was like, dude, this is so rad. I'm so excited. And that's why I'm really excited today. Um, I'm not sure if this is going to be some sort of a series for me. Um, you know, that show, uh, comedians and cars getting coffee. Yeah. Who I doesn't? Think this might be like so good. Creators and studios making wallets or something yeah, like that. I, you you have to make it a series. It's such a great idea. I'm I'm so pumped. Tell them, should you tell them what the idea is? Yeah, you want you want to tell them or do you want? Uh no, you should tell okay. them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I mean, I would love to tell them, but I think it'd be better if you told them. Sure. Okay. Okay. So the idea is we're going to be making a wallet together. I brought a couple different leather colors along, so Pete can pick you know his color combo. We're going to glue them together, stitch them up, and then uh, you know hopefully. At the end of this video, if uh, they look good enough, I'm sure they will. <laughs> That's the key. That's the key. No, totally. They're going to be awesome. I'm rusty. <laughs> we're going to give them away. So um, I'm excited to just hear Pete's story as we're, you know, making stuff with our hands. And just to get to know Pete on a different level, um, just kind of, the, I, I, I like to ask questions about people's lives and just to get to know them better. And what better way than over making a wallet? Like, yeah. Okay. So I went with Navy and Buck Brown just because I thought that's, I don't know, it's just... You can't go wrong with any of I these don't colors, to be can. honest. Yeah. And I think we're going to do something fun here. Yeah. Which you mentioned was a great idea. Did you want to explain that? Yeah. So we're going to sign, we're going to sign the, uh, the inside of the pockets so that, uh, once you do get, hopefully get this, if I don't completely destroy the stitching lines, uh, <laughs> you'll be able to peek in and see my signature and then his. So we're going to switch halfway through. So we both, uh, have a hand in making both wallets that are given away. That's such a great idea. Oh, I wish this was for my channel. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's so great. I'm going to watch this as a fan. <laughs> Not a That's fan amazing. of me, a fan of you. No, for sure. <laughs> Clarify that. All right. So, uh, let's, let's dive Let's in. pony up. Oh, that should be your line when this let's starts. Let's pony up. When you're, when this starts, you say, all right, let's pony up. And then we should redo this. I like that. That's really good. So these are the colors that I picked. Oh, you got to look in the, <laughs> first time run through. Look yeah, at yeah. This, this is right. good. This is all you keep all of this in. Are you gonna do oh, yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm ready. Let's do this. Let's pony up. <laughs> I, felt, I felt that <laughs> in my soul. All right. Um, actually, I don't think we need these quite yet, but we'll, oh, we just, don't? we'll just leave them there. Oh, I just, okay. I don't want to waste that pony up. The pony up I don't is think I such do a again. great line. Yeah, we'll slide them over. Move it over to the side. Got it. Did you make, you may obviously made this dop kit, right? Yeah, it was uh, just a prototype. I'm not, dop kits are just a pain to make. I, I like, I, I I'm like fascinated by them though, because they look so good. But they I'm do, just, they do look good. I could just never figure out the whole inside out, then turn it inside out thing. Like you're making it backwards. You are. And then it's yeah. done at the end. And I just so badly wanted to have that moment where I flipped it and it saw is it very for the first satisfying. time. It really is satisfying. It's the and zippers too, man. you see how bad you stitched, so. Yeah. We're just going to. Uh, I think, those. no, it looks great. All right. So we got some glue. Oh, what kind of glue is this? Uh, it's not barge, is, is it? No, it's white. No, this is, uh, it's from Tandy. Actually, okay. the one thing I really like from Tandy is their glue. It's, okay. It's amazing. I was a barge guy. 
Yeah. It smelled so good. <laughs> I just remember killing so many brain cells. Not purposefully, but barge. Unless you glued the cap shut, which I did at least on like a, a, every four weeks, I'd go to open it. And I was like, well, guess I'll go buy a new... <laughs> new tank of this thing because they're huge right you can't buy the little one that's they like, are very that's yeah. nothing that's one tote bag gone so <laughs> you know what i mean like you need the you need the big cans you do and the brush and sometimes you'd be brushing with that gutless scum of a brush and then like the bristles would come off yeah. on the edge and you'd be taking the end so then I, I switched to tanner's bond and i started taping all my edges yeah. no that's what we do with our tote bags oh okay way better that i started way. taping wallets too dude i was like i'm taping everything <laughs> it's just like <laughs> big old rolls <laughs> We're doing this in the dark because we can't dark. sacrifice the quality of the of the main okay. key light and how soft it is. So if we were to pull back and turn all the lights on, it would just wash out the cinematic nature of said podcast episode. And we're not prepared to sacrifice that quality. We're prepared to sacrifice the quality of what you might be having in your pocket forever. That is not indicative of his brand. That is just what's happening right now. Gotcha. So while you're concentrating super hard, um, I just want to ask you a few questions that I've been, you know, thinking about. Um, what what were you like, you know, as a kid growing up? Were you that guy? Right. Just, that guy just got a new exhaust today for yeah. sure. <laughs> He's got to have. So, what were you like growing up? Were you uh, were you someone that tried hard in school, or were you like more this kind of like Montessori kind of? No, I I was horrible at school. I, my mom said even like walking me into preschool for the first time she said you were like no more than four years old and you looked up to me and said i hate this place <laughs> and the school was actually called the magic kingdom which i thought was fitting but <laughs> um yeah and that stuck right until the end to like right to now nice it's even nice. hard like with my kids being like i don't like school mm -hmm. i'm like don't blame you mm -hmm. it's even hard being the supportive parent because i just think school is such a broken old system that is not meant for every type of like mm -hmm. learning that all these youth have now. And especially I didn't, I, I didn't learn the way mm -hmm. systematically you're supposed to. So yeah. I just, I struggled a lot. School is like a boundary. Yeah, it's definitely. I was more of a visual learner. I wasn't good at the analytical stuff. I failed math a bunch of times, failed science a bunch of times, did great in all the arts, did great in all the media arts mm -hmm. stuff. Obviously did great in gym because that you literally just need to be able to dribble a basketball <laughs> to pass that course. So, um, but yeah, and then, Obviously, as high school progressed, you got to kind of craft it more towards like your interests <laughs> yeah. and likes and then moved on to college. But even that I made a video about this, actually, how it's just it's so absurd that you're supposed to know what you want to yeah, do yeah. so early yeah. in life. And then like pick your career and then bam, get after it. And it's like, I don't even know what I'm doing yet. Like, yeah. I just I still don't know what I want to yeah. do. I'm doing this right now. Yeah. But I like, what am I going to do in 15 years? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know that you told me to pick right now. I still wouldn't be able to. And this is like, you know, another half lifetime passed since yeah. I've chosen the last time. Yeah. So yeah, totally I, just think, I think that's really hard. And I had a hard time with that. And I dropped out of college with one credit to go. What did you go to college for? Uh, graphic design and like web development. So okay. I did learn skills. Like I did learn like Photoshop and Premiere and, and those types of things, which was handy, but um, I didn't have the foresight to know it would be handy, but I dropped out with one credit to go because I thought it was kind of funnier to be one away than to have the paper. <laughs> My mom's like, but I want you to have the paper. I'm like, you want me to have the yeah, paper. Yeah. I'm a millennial. We don't use paper. <laughs> so I just kind of left it at that. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, you just hammer away. Eh? Just bam, get after it. These things are so handy. District leather. Yeah. That's what I thought. Why do you know all these things? That's amazing. You're how long have you not been doing leather and you still like up to date with it all? Uh, five years yeah plus you're, five years plus you're ridiculous Look at i that. like straight lines yours is a little uh a little jank mine's a little janky yeah you're right after college after um you dropped out what what were you thinking what was your process were you planning on going to take something else in college or what was what was that you know what so there, there was a day where i was late in one of my courses and the next class was coming in and it was the photography class and the photography teacher was there and I was editing a photo of like a, a Mercedes Benz that I took in like a dealership parking lot and I was blacking out all the other cars behind and the, the, the professor stopped and he was like, that's really good. I was like, oh, thanks. And he's like, what program are you in? And I was like, uh, digital media, whatever. And he's like, that's the wrong program. Like if you're doing this right now, you should be in photography. And I was like, well, wow. let's switch. So we went through the process of switching me over so that I could actually skip the first two semesters based on like my, my, the skill that I already had. But the process just ended up being kind of convoluted. It was going to end up meaning I had to like do more credits. And at the 
time I had planned to stay in college and keep going. And so it just meant if I do this and, and pursue what I actually do like better, I still got to be in school longer mm. than what I would do if I just finished what I don't like. I could get out sooner. Right. So I just chose to get out sooner because mm -hmm. I just didn't like it. But that was kind of like a bit of a, a sign like, hey, I'm, I'm good enough that like this professor recognized it and wanted to like fast track me through college. That's cool. There's something here. And that's kind of when I started to figure out how to make money with that on the side. Right. A little side hustle. And did you start with weddings? And yep. Yep. Did weddings for a long time, like five years. Mm -hmm. Got pretty good at weddings. Never want to do another wedding again. Yeah. Terrible. Yep. But a great way to learn. A great way to start. Great money. You're only working weekends. A great way to learn business and relationships and dealing with clients because it's it's yep. hard work. Yep. I also always stick my scratch all in that if I'm, <laughs> you know, waiting. That's kind of where I started. And then just doing freelance stuff. So anyone that needed like, hey, I run a business and I do X. And I'm like, okay, I'll take photos. I'm like, okay, sure. So I was doing a lot of that. Did you go the traditional route as well as like, you didn't really charge much at the beginning so you can get the jobs or were you kind of- Yeah, like yeah, right I, gate, I, like I was like, I know there's a huge school of thought and, and it's very, like everyone differs on this. I worked for free a lot mm -hmm. because I just wanted the portfolio and I wanted the foot in the door and I wanted the recommendations. And I know that like people are like, well, that's undervaluing you. And I'm like, well, I wouldn't work for free today. Yeah, yeah. Cause yeah, yeah. that would undervalue me. But, but like when I started and I had nothing, how else am I going to get a portfolio? Yeah. How am I going to get experience? How can I say I work for these people? And if they're pumped, they'll recommend me to their friends and then I can get paid. Right. And then they'll come back because they'll be so grateful that I did an over delivery and did a great job that they'll pay me for the next round. Yeah. And and I think people that argue the, oh, you're undervaluing yourself. There's no other way to learn. I think if you, and if that's your, if that's like the, the route you're going to take, I just don't think it's going to work. All right. So uh, I think before we go, before I forget, Pete, you should oh. sign the inside. Yeah. Uh, one of those. Cool. Beautiful. Oh, this is so fun. <laughs> Should have done this back when I was making them. It's a cool little maker's mark, you know? Oh, it looks so good on the blue. The contrast. Oh, looks amazing. All right. Boosh. Okay, cool. I used to love that little glass slicker thing where I could just like rub down all like the, all any kind of marks or nail nicks that I'd make. Yeah. After the fact with that little <laughs> glass slicker was so good. Dude, a good burnish with just like good water, burnish. wax, canvas. That's where you want to be. Let me Man. see that. Let me see that burnish. I was way again. underprepared for, for your knowledge of Leathercraft. I feel. Oh, that looks nice. Is that Coca Bolo? I think it's rosewood, but okay. it's very similar. Yeah, absolutely. That's when you know you're working hard, though, when you have a burnisher that looks yeah. real good. When you put time That's on it. That's when you know. You look at, the, look at the crafter's tools. Yeah. If they just look super shiny and perfect, it's like, one, you either take really good care of your stuff, or two, you're pounding orders. Get the heck out of there. Yeah. After you uh, finished your college, you did a few different jobs, but you yep. ended up working at a magic shop? So after college, I worked for a company. Um, well, I worked for like Apple for a day. I got a job at Henry's at a camera shop for two years. Then I took an internship for like a little cinematography company called Still Motion, and they were like big into weddings and stuff like that as an intern for them. And then I left there to work for a magic company, which is where I was for about eight years. And I was their cinematographer and photographer for all of the products that they made. And I would wow. help with designing decks of cards and stuff like that. And it was a really creative job and it was a way to combine all my interests, but which was magic, cinematography, photography, product marketing, making things. And I got to do all of that at this job and it was great. The boss is amazing. The people were amazing. My mm. employees were my best friends and they still are. And I still talk to them all today. And it was a great time. Got to travel and kind of checked all the boxes. The only box it didn't check is just there was, I knew one day I needed to just not have a boss. So that like whatever the edit was when it was done was how I wanted it to be and n nothing else. Right. I forgot I have to glue this side entirely. <laughs> Sorry. So I worked there for seven years and then I met a guy working there by the name of Chris Ramsey. And he's a YouTuber. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. And he does puzzles yep. and stuff like that. So we were both working there together because he's a magician. And uh, I remember one day we were standing in San Diego just talking about life. And he was like, what do you want to do when you, uh, you know, you want to be here forever? And I was like, nah, I don't think so. And he's like, me neither. I think I'm going to be a YouTuber. And I was like, what does that even mean? Like when people <laughs> say that, what is that? Yeah. The classic question, you can make money from that. I think so. He's like, I've got 30,000 subscribers. And I was like, what? How? And he's like, <laughs> I don't know. They're just there. Now, when I first started, I remember I uploaded a video, eight camera hacks in 90 seconds. It did okay. I sent it to a ton of blogs, blogs mm -hmm. and like websites where I thought like they might be able to feature it and it would look cool. It finally went viral and I was stoked. It didn't get me as many subscribers as I thought it would, but mm -hmm. uh, my income on that page went to 50 cents. <laughs> There's, it said 50 cents. I was like, oh, 
You can do this. You can make yeah. money with this. That 50 cents for me was proof of concept. Mm -hmm. that, that 50 cents may as well have been 500 grand. I was like, I can quit my job. And I told my wife, she's like, well, maybe don't quit your job off 50 cents. And I was like, no, <laughs> but it, like, I'm going to put more effort into it now because yeah. like, I know that there's, I feel like there's, let's go stick them. Oh, I'm going to need those to drive for a second. You can probably get yours. You're ahead of me. I just knew there was like, if I can make 50 cents, I can make more money. It, it works. That's yeah physical coin that came in and I can build on that. So I did and I started doing more and more and more and I didn't even quit that job until I had about 300,000 subscribers. Really? Yeah, like that trip I did with Maddie and the Dolomites in Italy with Porsche and I literally had to take that time off. Like I had put in like a time off request wow. and it was Maddie that really pushed me to quit that job. But I was scared to quit. I was like, well, I don't know if I want to quit. Like I, I, don't, know, I don't think I'll be able to make as much just yet. And he's like, trust me, if you can put both feet in, and just commit to it and your thought process isn't split by like having to be at work on time and still you know maintain that job and integrity yeah and then do youtube and put everything into it plus be a dad and and yeah. you know a husband and all that just quit so i was like okay wow. so chris quit on the friday and i quit on the monday crazy yeah and we're both pretty much at like the same place that's amazing yeah so it's, it's been fun to also have someone like him where we can like kind of go through that journey together yeah yeah as youtubers around like the same time coming from the same place and the same background both canadian mm -hmm. so i'd say he's probably one of like the biggest inspirations that i continuously get to speak with and jam ideas with and if you were to ask who my favorite youtuber is it's chris ramsey i was just gonna ask that so yeah that's amazing yeah tell me you brought like a cobra burnisher or something where you could just i wish i did but we're gonna do it the old-fashioned way oh, we're doing this with sandpaper sandpaper this guy you've been doing youtube you've got three hundred thousand subscribers mm -hmm. and you just quit your job yep how how did that impact your family life well, the, uh, my wife's always super supportive. So the first thing we always do is like, well, let's play worst case scenario. I'm like, this doesn't work. I lose the job. I quit my job. YouTube crashes and burns and we have zero money and we lose all of our vehicles and our house and we have to go live in your parents' basement and start from scratch working at Best Buy where we met. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, yeah, I'm in. I was like, yeah, Satan doesn't even sound half bad. Like that's better still than like a lot of scenarios in life, right? So I think it's amazing to, to have your, your spouse or your partner be super supportive because yeah. if that doesn't happen, it's not going to happen. That's a huge deterrent. And like, yeah. you've got this dream that you, you, you want to go for, but you have got one side of that dream. That's just like, it's not going to work or it's not practical or yeah. I don't support it. So now you you're just kind of weighed down by this thing. That's going to make it really difficult. Yeah. So she was all in, I was all in. And then it kind of started from there. So it's always been good because she's helped me kind of figure out even as the team expands, how to have a good work-life balance mm. and, and it's yeah, yeah. you know it's when kirk started that i thought like okay well now it's not just my family that i got to think about it's kirk's family yeah and yeah kirk's got you know a child and a wife and a relationships and things that he's got to maintain Absolutely. so like i don't want to be crushing his life at all these crazy youtube hours because you know like you're up editing late at night you're yeah. editing you get your ideas late at night yeah you're editing it's just it's there is no limit with youtube it takes everything my hair wasn't even gray when I started this job. <laughs> Literally, like, I, it's the same it's as, like... It's probably the most stressful, hardest job you've ever had in your yeah, entire life. And but I always, you love it. Oh, I love it for sure. I used to tell people, too, like, I always wanted to be my own boss, and I finally got to be my own boss, and I'm probably the worst boss to myself than any boss has ever been to me. <laughs> Just because, like, I'm Like, relentless. you're harder on yourself yeah, than anybody dude, else. I'm relentless, yeah. and I won't give up, and I everything's got to be perfect. And so I think her helping me get to the point where we just start a healthy relationship with hours mm. we come in at 8 or 8 30 and we leave at 5 or 5 30 every single day we don't work on weekends i don't bring my camera home i yeah. don't you know i don't film at my house i don't like there's just there's part of my life and i get that with youtube fans and people and it's great and we wouldn't be anywhere without the fans so i want to acknowledge you thank you for watching but you get to see the online version of me yeah but there's still yeah. like a life yeah. that I, I want to live privately that you don't need to see but i get that that's hard because everyone feels like they know you and yeah. it's to no one's fault but my own um, and I'm totally down with that, but I'm just a very private person and I just like those two things to be separate. And I know there's a lot of people that make money off including their family in their, in their stuff and that's totally fine. I've got no issue with that. It's just with how I like to operate. Mm -hmm. um, I like to keep those things separate. It's something to look forward to. It's, it's just a different part of my life that I get to have every single day. I get to come here and be, be one person, then I get to go home and be another. And it's not to say that like I completely change and you're, you meet me in real life and you're like, he's not what I thought he was at all. I like to think I'm the same person, 
that you see online and you'd be able to say or attest to that more oh, yeah. than I could. Yeah. No, absolutely. But I like that. And that's one thing that when I when I met you the first time a couple of years ago, obviously I'm gonna be nervous to meet you. Like I've seen you online, all your videos. And sure. I mean it's Peter McKinnon. And then I met you and you were just so real. Yeah. And it was refreshing to see that. You yeah. Know? It's refreshing yeah. to see that what you see on camera is exactly what you get off camera. Yeah, and that's and important I think for that's me. Important. You know? Yeah, that's important. And I felt the same way when I became friends with Casey, right? Like I used to stitch wallets in my phone book <laughs> watching Casey's video with my shirt off for no other reason. <laughs> I just it got hot upstairs and I would take my shirt off and stitch wallets Casey. shirtless. <laughs> yeah, you know, he's a good looking dude. So um, to, be able to meet him for the first time was also a bit yeah. nerve wracking. You yeah. know, you're like, wow, like I've seen this room. I've seen this studio online. It's iconic. I'm inside now talking to the guy at his desk with his glasses on. This is nuts. Yeah. So then to like, again, foster a friendship with the guy where we still talk every single week, mm -hmm. even though he's not posting and, and we're not in videos together, he's still a really, really good friend yeah. of mine and we never talk shop. All right. So, uh, we're at the point now where we can start beveling the edges. Oh, I was going to say pony up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we right. could just do it for fun. No, let's, yeah. let's bevel this um, thing macro shot of that that was the perfect curl look at this yeah come on come on first try <laughs> are you trying to keep it all in one little yeah, string always my thing, like when you're eating a cheese string right I yeah to, oh, oh I lost it. I lost we it. had it we had it so one of the things i really enjoy watching you do is your branding it's just you know it's peter's shot and that's i guess with a brand you want to know that this brand belongs to this person every single time you look at any any part of their work. And I think it's really cool um, how you've kind of created your own style of photography. That's something that I, I find a lot of people start coming to me for is like, how do I brand myself? How do I get myself? That looks really amazing. Was that one shot? One shot, baby. Bam. The one shot kid. That's probably one of the number one questions I get asked. So yeah. how did you go about branding yourself? Was it just kind Which of like- Which brand? Peter McKinnon or Pete's Pirate Life? I'm going to talk about Pete's pirate life. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. So I always just start with what I am really into. I've always been a dark and contrasty photographer. All the stuff that I shoot all the time is, is always on the moodier side, edgier side, shadows, stormy days. I, I just, I'm into that vibe in real life too. Like when we go to Iceland or we go to Norway or we go to some of these like Nordic places where we get to go in a cabin and it's dimly lit. Like I just enjoy those environments as, as a human being. If someone says, do you want to go to a beach or do you want to go to some cabin in the mountains? Like I'm the mountains all day. If you want to go to the beach, maybe your aesthetic's a little more whitewash. It's a little more um, bright and vibrant and fresh and you know, and that's pastel and that's, that's cool. And it looks great, but I've just always had that kind of edge. So naturally in creating a brand like Pete's Pirate Life, I, I knew it would go that direction. Now, Pete's Pirate Life was just an accident. Um, that was my, my next question, actually. Yeah. How did that come about? Sure. So, you know, Holiday, like they just call me a, a pirate. I, when I met them years ago, I remember Sean Duras called Holiday back. We were in Northern Ireland speaking at the Power of Video, and I'd met Sean Duras there. And we hit it off right away and became fast friends. And he called Holiday back home and said, like, you got to meet this guy. He's like a real life pirate. He's got long hair, tattoos, drinks beer, swears. Uh, he's like the closest thing to a pirate you'll ever meet. So they just used to call me Pirate Pete and stuff like that. <laughs> now, one of the things I loved about the leather craft business when I was running my my little company called Montgomery Leatherworks. Was that named after your father? Yeah, I, it's my middle name and it's uh, oh, okay. his, na his name okay. as well. Gotcha. So I loved that. And I loved that account because it was following that style of being a little more dark and moody. And I'm, I love product photography. I love the details. So being able to capture the, and it the shows. ridges on something like this, it was just like, I, I just would froth at the yeah. opportunity to photograph this. Like it's in the, a, bla a brass plate and like leather craft tools look so good. So I just found myself really enjoying photographing that stuff. And it was a nice break from landscapes and always trying to having to post something epic. Like I don't have any more epic mountainscapes or, you know, landscapes and mountain ranges and rivers and lakes. So it was nice to just flip over to that Montgomery account and shoot stuff that was just on my desk and yeah. still have it be epic in its yeah. own way. When I got rid of that business, I deleted that account. I think I had like 30,000 followers on it. And I just deleted it. Cause I was like, well, I guess I'm not going to do this business anymore. <laughs> Bam. Deleted. I like, didn't even change the name, save it for a rainy day. I just deleted it. Wow. 30 K. And then I found like a bit, like I, I missed it. And like I told you, Michael Strickland helped me get back into getting all like the tools that were updated and whatnot. And then I thought like, well, maybe I'll just make an account 
where I can post pocket knives and leather tools and just little things that I'm tinkering around with yeah. and working on. So I was like, oh, maybe I'll call it like Pete the Pirate or Pirate Pete, obviously taken. Mm-hmm. Every version of it was taken. <laughs> yeah, Pete yeah. the Pirate. Pete's a pirate. Pete Pirate. No, <laughs> Petey the Pirate. Like, I don't know. I just, and Pete's Pirate Life was one of those combos. And it's just like, boom. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, I guess that's that. And I have a friend, uh, Stefan Kuntz, who's like an incredible illustrator. And I was like, can you just draw me a little skull, but like make it kind of cute just because I don't like really aggressive skulls because if I'm going to make it a logo, one, it needs to be simple Two, it needs to be very recognizable and identifiable. And three, it needs to look really good stamped into leather. That was a a prerequisite for me because if it was a crazy, crazy busy thing and I wanted to put it on the bottom of a wall like this, I'd have to get that secondary logo or I'd have to get that, you know, PMC goods ink or something. Mm -hmm. We all, we all have those. And so he sent back a few versions and I was like, oh, it's a bit too mean. It's a bit too, like, I want it to be kind of like fun that like anyone could, could see it and, and think it was fun and not mm-hmm. be offended mm-hmm. or be like, I don't like skulls. It's, yeah, yeah, it, it's yeah. a skull, but it's not, it's not really like a skull like you would expect. So he drew that back. And then, um, I just started making little keychains, mm-hmm. little fobs yeah, and yeah. stuff like that. And I was always good at branding. So I went and got my rivets branded. Yeah, I saw those. Which those blows awesome. everyone's mind, yeah, right? Yeah. It's like, what's the one thing that I can just make this feel a little more unique with? So I did that and then... Branding. People, yeah, people wanted that and then... Um, how long ago was this, by the way? Like, how long ago did you start Pete's Pirate Life? I'd say about two years now. Okay. Yeah, two years now. So it's not up that long years. ago. No, it's, it's, pretty, it's okay. pretty new still. I just, like, I have such a passion for marketing and branding and yep. detail. And it was, a, it was an outlet for me away from what I'm known for to just really flex that muscle that mm-hmm. was inside. It was like something yeah. that I've always loved to do that I just, I can't, you're not going to see a knife pop up on Peter McKinnon's grid. Yeah. It's like mountains, <laughs> cars, like beautiful sky and like a grungy knife on like a metal container. You'd be like, what the heck did he get? Did he get hacked? It just wouldn't work. So that was the place where I could do that. And at, at the beginning, I didn't tell anyone it was me. I liked yeah, the uh, like the anonymous nature of it. It was cool. Like if you knew, you knew. And that became kind of one of the sayings, like, if you know, you know. And that was like, you know, it's Pete's secret merch brand that like, it's actually him. But then when my hands got involved, I kind of gave gave a lot away. I make what I would buy if I walked into Pete's Pirate Life and it was a place, I'd be like, I want all of this stuff. So I just make that. I don't really uh, get ideas from the audience. I don't like let Mm -hmm. them dictate what Mm -hmm. goes on. It's just what are we into? And then we brought Kirk into the fold and then like, what would he be into? And then as we're expanding that team now, we're, we're all kind of saying like, this would be cool. And because it's kind of like a side hustle and something that we just are so, so ultimately passionate about the sky's the limit. And we just want to take it to like as high as it can possibly go. To me, that is just the the best job you could possibly have. It's It's just so I want to do this. Let's, let's do it. There's times where we lose money on products multiple times where like, I want to ship that in water. I want to make this 24 karat gold plated and the team will be like, oh, okay. Yeah. Like, <laughs> we, we don't even think like, well, we're going to lose on that. Like yeah. the packaging is more than the actual product. And then we got to ship these. I'm like, I don't care. It's the experience. I but want that's people the, to feel That's the creator love. in you though, right? Yeah. Like that's, you just want them to enjoy the product. Yeah. You know, I, I think that's the best way to, to run a brand. Yeah. I want them to just feel how much I love it when they yeah. open it and receive their stuff right down to the tissue, right down to the, you do the same thing, dude. I opened that wallet that you gave me for my birthday and like just the way it was tied and the way it was, it was neatly packed with the tissue. I was like, yeah, love went into this and it, and it made it that much better. Yeah. The, the experience of getting something. Absolutely. Is, and that's what you've crushed it with. Yeah. Right? It's thanks. So good. Before we keep talking. Yeah. I think we should pony up. It's time. Whatever. Here's another. Let's get on the saddle. <laughs> oh, somebody stop me. You're a marketing <laughs> genius, man. I, all right. Uh, so I think this is the part where we're going to switch wallets. Oh, okay. Um, so you're going to take this guy, um, which is all navy and i want to stitch it with red thread i think you might have sanded yours slightly better than mine oh i had more time i would i would <laughs> hope that i would hope that you did anyway what were those needles that were really good were, were they called was james in john in, james john james yeah, yeah you're good man those were good <laughs> i like those those are my jam those fat tandy ones where you're like threading with a sharpie marker you're trying to push like an actual marker through the through the stitch hole then you'd break the needle but you'd keep going <laughs> That's when you get the vice grips out. Yeah, you get the vice grips for for sure on deck all the time. When I was starting out at my kitchen table. I have a picture, by the way, that I wanted to show you, Kirk, of me shirtless stitching a wallet at the kitchen table, and you'll love it. But I have to show you in person because I just I can't have that out in the internet. It can't be, yeah. No. How do you how do you come up with your ideas? I know you talked about you make whatever you want to make, but is there something that inspires you, or like how do you come up with those? 
yeah ideas well usually it's just being stuff that i really like chad and i chad's the guy i run pirate life with we're just such a great little team mm. and we just come up with, it's usually stuff that happens in real life. I might be out shopping or I have a lot of one, a certain product or a certain thing. And I'm like, yo, I've got nowhere to put this stuff. <laughs> okay. Recently I'm redoing my office downstairs in the basement and, um, I have an old book signed by Houdini that he wrote in 1901 or something. It's signed by signed, him? Hand signed by him. Beautiful penmanship because dudes cared about how well they could write back then chad's just such a good random guy to text about this i'm like hey how do i display this book like how, how would we i want to put this on my shelf but i want it to be like encased in glass or something like that like do you know any way to do that and then he might be like no i can't i'm like well what if we just made something to display old books or something like that and then that might go to like okay well people don't typically have old books just laying around they need to display what if we made an old pirate book like an old pirate log book and it was super distressed already. And huh. maybe the pages were blank. So people could just fill it with whatever they wanted. Yeah, yeah. Then they could put it on display and it would look sick. So like I just came up with that literally in, in this moment. Like that doesn't exist until. <laughs> Are I, you serious? Yeah, just, yeah, just <laughs> now. So then we might be like, okay, let's theme it. Like pirate log, like captain's log. Or, Are you already stitching? I'm still No, it's to... all good, man. I, I want to get ahead of the Dude, game. Dude, how so. do you. Ugh, this is not. Is this waxed? No. That's why it's bonded. It's bonded nylon. Though, That's so why it's, it's just crushing me. No By the way, if you're stitching with a pony, you must you must put leather on the end, or you'll just have a dirty line. <laughs> like you, people will think you have a presser foot that's just hammering a hard edge down that stitch. And you'll be like, "No, I wasn't using a machine. I did it by hand." And you'll be like, "No, you didn't. I had a Cobra, Cobra class. I don't even know what it was, but it was a Cobra, and it just decimated, decimated yeah. leather." I was yeah. like, "Is this real life?" I think what are you supposed that's why i got so into that glass slicker because i was like <laughs> it's the only thing that'll take that presser foot mark out and that's a straight giveaway when you look at leather goods yeah just look for the presser foot line yeah. you're like you bam machine stitch. stitch or not see ya stitching so long and take my hoodie off i almost ran out dude yeah <laughs> look you, at this. that is that's conservation of thread that is you'd be any employer's favorite guy <laughs> <laughs> the thread that's cost just... alone would would be amazing for that company. I was getting nervous. I was like, "Oh man, you told me I had enough." <laughs> I know that would have been on me. Yeah. Okay, don't mess this next part up though. No, I have enough. I think I have enough to go around and backstitch at least like once or twice. Let's just talk about a little bit um maybe is there something that you're kind of looking to do in the future? Not necessarily with Peter McKinnon or Pete's Pirate Life. Is there any other ventures that you're thinking or maybe just expanding? I like to say I'll do YouTube forever. And maybe I will. Maybe I'll upload stuff and constantly be dropping projects and little art projects and side projects on YouTube. But I don't know. As my interests kind of shift, I guess like you never really know. You look at Parker, right? And like he, yeah. he he's suddenly like a motorcycle company and you're like, yeah. wow, that came yeah. out of nowhere. Yeah. So I, I leave room for the spontaneity of things like that to happen. I'm getting big into auto and stuff like that. And I'm really enjoying photographing auto and, and, and moto and, and those mm -hmm. types of genres. Maybe there's something there. But I've always been into just little things. Leather goods is a great example. But as far as my career would go, like I, I really like finance and investing. Uh, I'm big into playing pool. I'd love to keep practicing and get like just dirty at playing pool, <laughs> which is absolutely disgusting. And I keep saying that and it, it is it is funny because I'm not very good at all. But one day it'll click. And then people will be like, wow, I guess he has been saying that for like four years and now he's it. an animal. But yeah, I, don't, I don't know where projects will take me. I'm open to it. I think people ask me all the time, like, would you want to shoot something for Hollywood or would you want to mm. film a movie yeah, or DP yeah. something? And I think I'd rather be in a movie than film I, it. You know what's funny? I was going to ask you this question. Have you ever put your name no. into any agencies? No, or? it'd be fun. Probably now people know who you are. So have you... Has anybody no, ever it's, some, you it's something that I, I would definitely look into. I, I just feel like I'd rather be acting in a movie than shooting one. I'd have more fun doing that. Yeah, I could see you. Just I could have see more you fun with that. it. Like I don't want to be part of a huge camera crew and it comes right back down to YouTube it is kind of whatever I say it is. Yeah. And it's not that I have a problem following rules or with authority or working. Do you work well with others? No, <laughs> I do. It's just like when it comes to the, the creation of something, I think it's so personal. That's just something that's very much determined by the person creating it. And I think when it turns into like a huge team and, and corporate interests and, and money comes involved and all yeah, that yeah, kind of yeah. stuff, I just, I'd rather not be involved with it that. Doesn't... I'd rather write a book or be on a podcast or stitch a wallet or play some pool or I just stuck that. I, don't know. I was really hoping that would <laughs> stick and I put a hole for no reason. But whenever I see that, I'll think of you. <laughs>
<laughs> so I think that that could be something that's fun, but I like to just leave it open for interpretation. Who knows? With that, you did a, a couple of videos with that one YouTuber. I forget her name, but you guys had oh, a Julie. script. Yeah. Julie. Yeah. And that was interesting to watch because yeah. it was something that you just so naturally took to. Like, yeah. it looked like you've been doing that for years. Yeah. So she's, she's I, I would thing. be interested to see you maybe in some sort of a film. I think that'd be kind of Yeah. Cool. I, I honestly, I would love it. Hey, do you backstitch twice? Uh, yeah, like two and a half times. So two like half. threads will come. I'm just, I'm getting real low here. Yeah. How you doing? You get, the sun's getting real low, big guy. <laughs> it's a Hulk reference. You can you're throw, good, man. Just one more there. through the back and then you're good. Oh, I think, I think we'll make it here. Yes. <laughs> Where's those vice grips, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Hang on. The cross. Keep this no, up. just leave it there. You're good. What do you mean? Just pull it all the way through now. Oh, and that's it? Yeah. Oh, one and a half. Got it. Look at that. It's you over. couldn't get any closer than that, I it's think. It's over. I mean, I'll take that all day. It's been years. Wow. Damn. I love that combo, too. Yeah. It reminds me of like some sort of a, a car interior. Something it does. It, it looks luxury, doesn't it? Does. It does. It looks, it looks real expensive. Good. Let's see all yours. Right. That's Pete's. Oh, yeah, perfect. Uh, <laughs> I don't even want to see it. I know what to expect with your quality. The best. <laughs> nah. All right. So I think this is probably one of the most satisfying parts. Oh, uh, bro. You didn't bring the pen? I, Max had to use it today. Uh, and we only have one in the entire shop. So all right. I'll do my best. Sucks. Ooh, with oh. these? Yikes. You want me to do it? No, I can do it. <laughs> Two strands. <laughs> Three. Four. Three. So come on, bro. Get some new scissors. You know how fast we go through those? It's crazy. You got it? <sighs> yes. All right. All right. All right. You're a pro at this part. This is this is when you see the flame mark because someone held it there too long. Yeah. That also bothers me. This is where the whole ASMR part of leather crafting is is just exceptional. Worth it. Yeah. And it's funny, when I started my channel, I wasn't even thinking about going ASMR. Yeah. I thought I'm like, what am I what kind of music am I gonna put to this that won't sound cheesy? Yeah. You know, and then I'm just like, screw it. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna put, put any, put any music. music. And then it just worked. Which actually probably makes the edit easier for you oh, and way more enjoyable for the audience. All right, stoked. Get that off there. Once you get home, do a little bone fold on this, and then whoever oh, sure. wins this, you should laser their initials onto it. That's a good idea. That would be cool. So whoever yeah. wins it, they tell you what they want on it, be it a laser or a quote or something, and then just get that little, give it, get Max to give her a little, a little polish, a little, little buff. polish at the end, and then you're uh, off to the races. Mm, there we go. That sounds good. Yeah, it looks good. Feels good. Might even be too slippery. Like oh, butter, man. That's that amazing. is so good. I want to keep this for myself. <laughs> Maybe I will. I love how you turn things over in your hand. It's so magician, like, oh. <laughs> like <Yeah>. the flip. <laughs> Look at that. That's amazing. Bam. All right. What's your favorite magic trick to date? The one that you like performing the most? I don't perform any anymore. Um, or if you had to perform one from from back in the day what would it be i think i just like doing simple stuff like simple like coin vanishes and stuff because it's it's what translates to everybody and i i would say i always like doing unexpected things when you get handed back some change or something and you put it in your hand and it, it disappears like no one's expecting that and it's just that you catch them for that brief moment like <laughs> <gasps> wait what and they don't understand because they're not like hey i'm a magician i'm going to perform some stuff for you yeah, yeah, the yeah. guard's up now right yeah, yeah, so now yeah, you're yeah. trying to break down that barrier break down that guard but when you just do it unsuspecting something just small and cute that's what people remember they're like i don't even know if he was a magician he just like i gave him back his change and then it wasn't there anymore you can kind of see it um like right there that looks good not bad that looks good <laughs> yeah. we'll shake bring, it off we'll have to bring it back because it's going to somebody <laughs> so <laughs> all right well Pete, thank you so much again for having me here. It's been a blast. Dude, uh, so much fun. It was so much fun seeing where you work. Yeah. And seeing where Kirk works and uh, Vito. Yeah. Uh, is meaning, that public yeah, knowledge? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, cool. Fine. So yeah, I've been meaning to get you here for so long. Yeah, so it's no, nice it's, to actually uh, finally have you over. It's good to be here. And uh, I always have a good time. It's great yeah, hearing your story and, and your inspiration. And uh, thanks for letting me revisit what is truly a, a, a real passion of mine. So that well, was, you did, that you was did fun. a heck of a job today. That and was fun. I'm really excited to get these into the hands of, of some people out there. So. Yeah. Yeah. Take some photos. Definitely like when they're ready for posting and you have a story, like I want to repost it too. Cause cool. it's, that's fun. I appreciate that, man. Yeah. If you want to win one of these, make me laugh on my Instagram <laughs> post. I want to, I want to, I want a nice comment, not nice, funny comment, whatever you want, but get to my heart. Belly, I'll, I'll, yeah, belly, belly laugh. laugh. That's what it is. Like you got, it's so funny. You show your wife. 
Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's and a good then idea. she laughs too. And if she laughs, you're definitely gonna win. If she so, laughs, it's yours. Yeah. Two winners, two wallets, one of a kind. Get that joke book out. <laughs> See ya. Right, peace. Peter McKinnon. What an absolute legend. Thanks again, Pete, for hanging out with me and just telling your story. I appreciate it. I know a lot of people here on this channel will too. And yeah, thanks, man. Your, your friendship means a lot to me, so thank you. For all of you who have made it this far, congratulations. I know this one was a little bit longer than usual, but I'm gonna tell you how to win this. In the video, I kind of glaze over it real quick, but it's simple. All you're gonna do is go follow Pete, Pete McKinnon, Pete's Pirate Life, uh, if you're not already subscribed to Peter on YouTube, go ahead and do that. He puts out incredible content. Subscribe to me, and on Instagram, I'm gonna be posting the same thumbnail on my Instagram grid. All you have to do is tag three friends, and again, comment something that is meaningful, funny, something that I'm gonna enjoy reading. It's always just so disappointing when someone shows up and like, I'm here for the wallet. You guys can do better than that. Uh, I'm gonna make you work a little bit for it, especially for these wallets signed by Peter McKinnon and made by Peter McKinnon himself. So. Let's just do this, let's just do this the right way. Make me laugh and uh, one of these wallets can be yours. All right guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like this, please consider subscribing and I love you, God bless, peace. We'll see you in the next one.